Hi, Stamper friends. How are you? Hope everyone's having a good hump day. I'm just a couple minutes later than normal. So, get things on here so I can see. And give a second for everybody to get, get on. And we will get started. So I want to thank everybody that's been sharing my video. Um, when you watch my video, I ask that you share it. And when you share it, put a comment in the in the comment section on this original on the original post back on Stamping with Denise page, and um, just put that you shared it. So then that way I can see everybody who shared it. Because if we're not Facebook friends, I don't think I, I can see that it was shared several times. But I may not be able to see everybody who actually shared it. So, and then what I do is if you share my page, I put you in a, I put them in random, random.org, I think is the thing online where I put everybody's name and it automatically picks somebody. And actually the winner for last week was Maria Pavlich. Maria shared my video, and I so appreciate that. So she is going to get um, the card I worked on last week. Remember, we I made the um, kind of the the multi-page card where you could have had room for lots of people to sign it. Yeah, so um, Maria will get that to me, and I I know how to get that to you, Maria. So um, I'll get that out to you soon. So yeah, this week, if you'll share my video, type shared on the, under this, you know, the link to this original post. And next week, before next week's video, I'll randomly choose someone to win something from this week's video. Okay, well, we're going to get started here. And today, um, I'm going to do a 3D item. I'm going to do a little gift bag. And we're going to use some 6x6. Six six. We're going to make it using 6x6 six six paper. You can do it, though, with making any using any size paper. You can use 8x8, 10x10, 12x12. You can even go smaller. But um, I'm going to use 6x6 six six inch paper. And here in just a second, I'm going to put the my phone up in the stand. And we'll get started, and I'll show you how we make them. Okay? So hang tight, close your eyes. I'll try not to move you around too much. I don't want you to get any motion sickness. So hang tight here. Okay. Let's see here. Get my cord up out of the way too. Okay, I think we're pretty good. That wasn't too bad, was it? Okay. Now, like I said, we're gonna be we're gonna be making some little gift bags out of some six by six paper. I'm gonna show you some of the examples I've made. I've made this one. It's a cute little bag, and I've um, tied it with some baker's twine. Put a little sentiment and a little heart on it. Okay, that's that's um nice cute little bag. Great for gifts. Um with the holidays coming up, you can use them for gift cards, small gifts, things like that. And if you've made it, it makes it even special. More special. Okay, these are some that I made when I was playing around with um I used retired paper on this, but um I had um I was making a couple samples. This one was a is a quilted pattern from last year's holiday catalog that I happen to have. So, you know, you don't want to practice on your good paper. You want to practice on scrap paper. So, here's another one I used with paper that I made using paper from that same package. This one I put little handles on. And I even made a little tag. I don't know if you can see the tag. This was a piece that I, that was scrap, and you'll see where it came from. It just happened that the design on the paper was exactly the size of what I needed to cut out. You could do a two from, and tie it onto the ribbon handle here, and there you go. Now this one I have kind of, you know, given it a little bit of a of a 
pinched look little, and so that you could you know close it these would be really cute you know if you pinched them shut closed them with uh, a um, some of our design you know cute little clips that we have in our catalog okay so these are just something I was playing with this paper still is current and of course I meant to look up the name of it and I can't remember it right off let me look it up here Where's my paper at? Here it is. It is called, it is the Twinkle Twinkle Designer Series Paper. It's um, got lots of blues and whites in it, and it's it's go actually good for for baby gifts, the, the paper in the pack. But um, anyway, so I'm going to set these aside, and I'm going to show you how I made these cute little th things here. Okay, let's set these over here because I may be bringing those back. Okay, so just like last week, we're gonna we're gonna be using the scoreboard again. It's a board that has grooves in it, and I'm gonna be using two sheets. Each bag, each bag this size takes two sheets of six by six inch paper. So, and this paper is from the Tropical Escape package of designer series paper. It's pinks and greens. Look at this. It's, it's really pretty. Like I said, I'm having a hard time getting into Christmas quite yet. So, maybe in the next few weeks I will. But it's, it's really pretty paper. And it, it's already six by six, so that's why I chose. You know, it, and actually this is perfect if you've got 12 by 12 paper you like. You just cut it in. You can get four pieces of six by six out of a sheet of 12 by 12, and there you go. So, we're going to start out here. And when you're, when you're looking at how you're going to, you know, which is going to be the inside and which is going to be the outside, you got to kind of look at your designs and make sure that there's not a particular direction. Um, for this paper, there really isn't. The flowers kind of go, there's no up, down. Some go that way, some face that way, some face this way, some face that way. So it really doesn't make any difference. But on this particular paper here, you can see there was a design, the, because this is the, ins, the back side of the paper. So when I was deciding which was going to be the top of the bag, I had to do it so that the these little stitched Christmas trees were going the right direction, okay? So when you're when you're planning your bag, you, you have to think about that. And the same way with this one, although this didn't have a specific up and down, I just needed to make sure that both sheets of paper were scored the same way so that this design was consistent on both sides. Okay. So, since this one doesn't really have a particular way, it's not going to make any difference. But I'm going to have the pink be the inside and I'm going to have the green be the outside. Okay, so, do you remember last week when I used my scoreboard, I showed you this little trick using a little piece of, of soap to kind of rub your stylus on. It makes it nice and smooth. Do you know something I just learned? The stylus has two ends. It has a thinner end and it has a bigger ball. The bigger one is for your lighter weight paper so that you're less apt to tear it. The thinner end is for your heavier um, papers like cardstock to get a nice um, deep groove. I just found that out a few weeks ago so I thought that was an interesting fact I'd pass it on. So okay we're gonna score this paper on three sides, we're going to score at one and a half inches. Let me move my board here so you can see. You can see there's numbers here right across the top of my board. So I'm going to put my stylus. This is one and a half. We're going to do one and a half going this way. One and a half here. And one and a half here. So we're going to do one and a half on three of the sides. 
and then we're going to score it three quarters of an inch on the side that you want on the top. Okay, so like I said, on this paper it doesn't make any difference, but on like some of those other bags I made, it did make a difference. So we're going to do the same with this. One and a half. One and a half. One and a half. And three quarters. And there you go. And we're done with the board. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold on our lines. Now we're going to start out with the side that we um, scored at three quarters of an inch. And that's, like I said, that's the top of your bag. So that is what's going to show on the outside. So you're going to fold that back. Okay, and you want to use your bone folder to get a nice crisp edge. Okay, and then you're going to do each of these this way. And this way. And this is real important because this helps you get a nice, nice bag. Especially when you're if you're doing a smaller bag, I think it's the it's more important. Okay, so we're gonna do the second piece of paper. This one we're gonna fold this way. Fold this one this way. And fold this one this way. Okay, so we've scored all of our lines. We've got good crisp folds. Okay, there we go. So now, on one of these, on one of the pieces, it really doesn't make any difference which one, you're going to cut out the corner on both sides, okay? These little squares, remember I said I made a tag on that one bag that you'd the quilted piece? This is where those little squares came from, these corners. You can still use these to make a cute little tag. On your se second piece, you're only going to cut the horizontal line here, okay? And go. there we are. Okay, that's all. That's all for that. Okay, let me get these together here. And there we go. So, when you're doing a three dimensional project, where did my glue go? You want to use a stronger adhesive than snail. I tend to either like the tear tape that I used in last week's um, project, or I like to use this Tombow glue doesn't take a lot and it's pretty it's pretty strong and it's also pretty forgiving hang on there we go we're getting it started okay put a little bit on there line this right up and fold it and there we go okay, now I'm gonna fold these two in we're gonna glue these see and these are they're gonna go up like this this is going to go like this, and there's your bag. How simple is that? Okay, let's put these together. So, my glue's about out. I have another one around here somewhere, but. Okay, so. Put these up here. I like to kind of do it standing up because it makes it easier. And the other thing I like about using the glue for projects like this is it's, you know, it, it's a little more forgiving because you can kind of slide it around and make sure you get everything, you know, right where you need it to. Sometimes that snail adhesive 
once it's stuck it's stuck and it's hard to get it um, you know to adjust if you need to so and then all we're gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna put those down make sure those got it here real good adhesive on or adhered really well okay now we're gonna put a little bit of glue on here come on this is one of my favorite glues okay I'm gonna put this together right here and right like that I think we're fitting together pretty well. Put this one together here. I think I might need to put a little more glue on those corners there, but that's okay. Come on, glue. There we go. Sometimes you got to, I mean, it will stick. This Tombow glue is great. It will stick. Sometimes you have to just be a little bit patient with it. And you certainly don't want too much. There we go. Oops, see, I got a little bit too much on there. But I'm going to get that right off. There we go. Okay. So there's our cute little tropical bag. Okay, so at this point, you've got a couple options. You could punch some holes in the top like I did on this one and tie some ribbon through, attach a little tag, and you're ready to go. This one, just put a bow around it, you know, with some baker's twine and a little sentiment. Be ready to go with that. This one, I think what I'm going to do is use some of our really pretty what is this called polka dot twall ribbon i just love this okay so i'm gonna i think what i'm gonna do is tie it around in a bow i haven't done one of these like this so we're gonna see what this looks like get a little bit extra ribbon out here sometimes you need a third hand but we're gonna see how we do here I'm going to go ahead and trim this off here. If it's a little long, that's okay. We can always trim the edges down. I've got a little bit of glue on my hand, and the ribbon wants to stick. This ribbon is one of my favorite. Look at how pretty that is. It's so light. It's so delicate. It's so much fun to work with. Anyway, okay. Let's see here. Again, I'm, I'm still dealing with a little bit of glue on my hand. Let me make sure I'm flat all the way around. Yep. Okay. People that know me know that I can be bow challenged at times, so I never do very difficult bows. And so sometimes you have to just kind of play with them. Okay. I don't think that's too bad there. There you go. That's kind of pretty. Okay, there you are. Little bow. You'd have to play with it a little bit, but I think it works. But I am going to try something else too. I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to see if I can make a flower and see if how that looks to go on it, too. I'm going to use our four-petal flower punch. This was new this year in our annual catalog, and I just received it a couple weeks ago and have only used it a couple of times. I'm going to print, pick out, or punch out a couple of pieces of, or a couple of the flower shapes. There is a stamp set that matches this, but I decided not to use it for this flower. This is Granny Apple Green. And this is one of the colors in this paper. Something that's really nice that Stampin' Up! does is on their all their designer series papers, they list the colors that they use in their papers. So here it says they use this Tropical Escape 6x6 designer series paper uses basic black, Blushing Bride, Granny Apple Green, Shaded Spruce, and Whisper White. 
So it makes your planning, planning your projects super, super simple. Okay? So I pulled out a piece of the Granny Apple Green, punched out a couple of the um, flowers. I'm just kind of curling the edges a little bit, give my flowers a little bit of dimension. And I think for this, I might glue it together with a glue dot. I might adhere the two pieces together with a glue dot. Um, I'm use my scissors here. Put a glue dot on the bottom. Put that right there. Okay. And in the center of that flower, I'm going to put one of our fast, clear faceted gems. These also come in gold. But I thought the clear looked really nice. Let me use one of the bigger ones. Okay. There we go. I think I, <coughs> excuse me, might have liked the flower a little bit better if I'd have stamped it first, but that's okay. You know what? If I really wanted to, I could go back and stamp it. Then I could use one of our stamp our dimensionals. They're just our little foam squares. Whoops, I got one of the and put it on the back. Peel the backing off. And voila. You got yourself a cute little bag with a little bow and a flower accent. You could put the bow or flower anywhere you want it. Maybe you don't want both. But again, there's no right or wrong, it's just whatever it is you like. So, Maria Pavlich, you won my card from last week's video. I want to thank you for sharing. I'm going to ask you to please like my video, share it with your friends, and when you do share it, please make sure you comment below this video on the original post that you shared it so that I can enter you into a drawing for next week, for for my little my uh, bag that I made today, and I'll get that. I'll try. I don't know how well that's going to mail. We'll have. I'll have to think about that one. I may have to send you some cards instead. But um, and like I said, I've seen these bags made with all sizes up using up to 12 by 12 paper. So if you'd like to see me do larger bags, let me know. I'm always looking for ideas for my videos. Thanks again for stopping by and sharing my video, and I have a great rest of your week. Bye now.